Section 10 of Poems by Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell by Charlotte, Emily, and Anne Bronte. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. The Teacher's Monologue by Charlotte Bronte. The room is quiet. Thoughts alone people its mute tranquillity. The yoke put off, the long task done. I am, as it is bliss to be, still and untroubled. Now I see for the first time how soft the day or waveless water, stirless tree, silent and sunny, wings its way. Now as I watch that distant hill, so faint, so blue, so far removed, sweet dreams of home my heart may fill, that home where I am known and loved. It lies beyond, yon azure brow parts me from all earth holds for me, and morn and eve my yearnings flow thitherward tending changelessly my happiest hours i all the time i loved to keep in memory lapsed among moors ere life's first prime decayed to dark anxiety sometimes i think a narrow heart makes me thus mourn those far away and keeps my love so far apart from friends and friendships of to-day Sometimes I think tis but a dream I treasure up so jealously. All the sweet thoughts I live on seem to vanish into vacancy. And then, this strange coarse world around seems all that's palpable and true, and every sight and every sound combines my spirit to subdue to aching grief, so void and lone is life and earth, so worse than vain the hopes that in my own heart sown and cherished by such sun and rain as joy and transient sorrow shed have ripened to a harvest there alas methinks i hear it said thy golden sheaves are empty air all fades away my very home i think will soon be desolate i hear at times a warning come of bitter partings at its gate and if I should return and see the hearth-fire quenched, the vacant chair, and hear it whispered mournfully that farewells have been spoken there, what shall I do, and whither turn, where look for peace, when cease to mourn? This is not the air I wish to play, the strain I wish to sing, my willful spirit slipped away and struck another string, I neither wanted smile nor tear, bright joy nor bitter woe, but just a song that sweet and clear, though haply sad, might flow, a quiet song to solace me when sleep refused to come, a strain to chase despondency when sorrowful for home. In vain I try, I cannot sing, all feels so cold and dead, no wild distress, no gushing spring of tears in anguish shed but all the impatient gloom of one who waits a distant day, when some great task of suffering done, repose, repose shall toil repay. For youth departs, and pleasure flies, and life consumes away, and youth's rejoicing ardor dies beneath this drear delay, and patience, weary with her yoke, is yielding to despair, and health's elastic spring is broke beneath the strain of care. Life will be gone ere I have lived. Where now is life's first prime? I've worked and studied, longed and grieved through all that rosy time. To toil, to think, to long, to grieve, is such my future fate? The morn was dreary, must the eve be also desolate? Well, such a life at least makes death a welcome wished-for friend, then aid me, reason, patience, faith, to suffer to the end. End of section 10